Mayflower Congregational. All right. Oh, there we go. Welcome to Mayflower Congregational, United Church of Christ here in Sioux City, Iowa. Where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are an open and affirming church that welcomes all into our community, regardless of sexual orientation or identity. For those of you who are new uh, joining us here this morning, I am Pastor Jesse Lent. I am the pastor here at Mayflower, and we are so happy to have you. Following the service is our world-famous cookie and coffee time, and you are all welcome to Come and join us. We also have materials in the Welcome Center that lets you know who we are as a church, who are a part of the United Church of Christ. We'll begin this morning with announcements, and those are on the back of your bulletin. Our worship services are in person and online on Facebook at 11 a.m. Log articles are due today. Be sure to get those to have. I did mine last night. Thankfully, I was reminded. Uh, our adult Bible study on Zoom will be meeting today at 2. If you are uh, interested in that, uh, Bob Fitzmaier is the contact person. Karen Heidman will be leading the group uh, for today, 724. And Conrad Douglas will be leading the group on 731. They will be looking at the book of Genesis. And it will be an adventure. So if you know someone or you know someone that wants to be a part of that, we will get the link to you. And uh, Bob's contact information is on there. Uh, there will be an active shooter training scheduled for August 14th, right after the worship service. And uh, we will have someone from the Sioux City Police Department here to present that program while we were while we are enjoying our snacks in the West Parlor. We will be receiving three new members into the church next Sunday on July 31st, so it will be a new member Sunday, and there will be a reception with cake and uh, some other things to welcome those new members into our faith community. The Greek Fest at Holy Trinity Orthodox Church. I'm really excited to go to that because I have not been to one yet. Um, it is going to be July 29th, 30th, and 31st. And that is at Holy Trinity Orthodox Church on 6th Street. 6th in Virginia. And uh, tonight there will be an LGBTQ potluck at First Unitarian from 5.30 to 7. So if you're interested in that, uh, First Unitarians on Jackson Street, um, come and join us. Are there any other announcements uh, that may not have made it into the bulletin? Oh, go ahead. Um, the board of Kevin Fitz Preschool mm -hmm. is asking people to register for the Children's Day Parade at 5 p.m. at the Tell people about Calico Kids Preschool. Yes. They are open for new enrollment for kids. Um, okay. So we'll move on to joys and concerns. I have several here. Um, I spoke to uh, Rosada, which we call Rosie. Uh, her, she's with her friend Brittany, uh, who's getting ready to have a medical operation in Des Moines. Not Des Moines, I'm sorry, uh, Omaha. Um, so we need to keep her and her thoughts and prayers. Um, I had the opportunity to visit with Paula Peters this week. She's very anxious to get back and join us again for worship. Uh, she is recovering uh, from her medical procedure. So we need to remember to keep her and her thoughts and prayers. And uh, Terry Cobb, uh, I visited with him a couple times. He is at Acura. Healthcare, or cure healthcare. Uh, we need to be sure to keep him in our thoughts and prayers, along with all of our homebound who are not able to be here with us today. 
or are in uh, nursing facilities. A uh, friend of my family's mom and Mark, Brian Brown, uh, he met him on one occasion when they were up. They asked for prayers uh, for him. Uh, he is on hospice at the VA in Milwaukee. And uh, we continue prayers for Ukraine and Russia and all of those affected by gun violence. Are there any other? Yes, go ahead. Would it like you to pray for all who are in danger of self harm? Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, maybe you would like to acknowledge that nice tree that we got planted out there on the side? Oh, yes. I'm not big here, so. Um, it's a memorial tree for all the men in our family that have passed away. Okay, so on the side of the church, the back of the church, there is a tree planted uh, in memory of all of the family members of Linda Cron who have uh, passed away. Yes, I said that. Oh, we do have one joy. Um, he's not here with us, but uh, Mitchell Culberson's birthday um, is today or was tomorrow. So uh, he might watch later on online. So I thought we would sing happy birthday. Okay. Let's all say happy birthday for uh, Mitchell. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Us this day, 
and that you would again teach us how to pray. Help us to understand what prayer really means for our everyday lives, and help us to see what, the, what prayer shows us, what your prayer shows us, the Lord's Prayer, about what prayer is really all about. We lift up all of these things up to you in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, and whatever words are comfortable for you, by boldly saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
The one who is holy and righteous makes us holy and righteous. We are participants, heirs, and co-creators of new life found in the redemptive love of Jesus Christ and in the realm of the Holy One which has no end. In this, grace abounds and liberates us to new mornings, new mercies, and new life. Amen. You may be seated. First reading is Genesis 18, 20 through 32. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry, outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very great their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord, then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteousness with the wicked? Suppose they are built are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are there in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? The Lord said, If I find at Sodom to be righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. I am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? He said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five. Again he spoke to him. Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry as I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it. If I find thirty there, he said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, for the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. Children's time. Will our children come forward? Those who are young or young at heart. Is there anyone here who doesn't have a name? A name is important because it gives us our identity. One of the first things to, that happens after a baby is born is that the parents give the baby a name. That's right, Amelia. As we grow older, and live our life with honesty and goodness, we bring honor to our name. If we look inside of a telephone book, sure we've all, you still use telephone books? Yeah. You can see all kinds of names and phone numbers. But what if this telephone book contained only numbers? That would not be helpful. Because we would have no way of matching the phone number to the person, right? And would have no way of being able to make contact 
with them if there was only numbers but no names. The same way with a map. No, I don't need that. That's for you, Billy, if you ever have a response. The same way with this map. We use a map to find out where we're going, right? Here, you want to pull that map up there, Billy? Yeah. You ever used a map before? A map would not be helpful if locations did not have names, right? We would have a difficult time finding our way and knowing where we are. As you can see, names are very important. God has many names. Jesus, Holy Spirit, Lord, Master, Prince of Peace, the Word, and Yahweh, just to mention a few and he suggested to us, Jesus, that we call God Father when we pray. The Bible tells us that the disciples saw Jesus pray, and they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. The Bible tells us that the disciples learned this prayer that we say every Sunday. It's called the Lord's Prayer. And we pray, our Father in heaven. May your name be kept holy, or hallowed be your name. When we pray to God and use the name Father, it reminds us that God is like a loving Father who will protect us and take care of us. It is a name that helps us know how to talk to God when we pray. It is a name that helps us find our way when we need direction. Just like on the map. Yeah. It is the most holy of names. When we live our lives with honor, we are honoring God's name. That's when we do good things for other people. Yeah. So let's have a little prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for teaching us how to pray. Be with us each day as we learn more and more about prayer and how to be in relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. So here is your candy. Not quite old enough to get candy yet, really. Okay. You're going to be a good role model. That's right, Billy. <laughs>
You're not getting any cookies. Finally, they arrive at the checkout counter. Junior is an experienced shopper. So he knows that this is his last chance. So he stands up in his seat and shouts out, In the name of Jesus, may I have some chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Everyone in the checkout area stares, then laughs, then applauds. And then while Bob watches with an open mouth, 23 shoppers go and buy the little boy his chocolate chip cookies. 23 boxes of them. In our gospel reading for today, the disciples ask Jesus to teach them how to pray. What does prayer mean for us? What role does prayer play in our everyday lives? Jesus responds to them by teaching them this common prayer that we pray every Sunday, known as the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a model prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples in order to show them what all prayer should be. The first line of the Lord's Prayer, according to Luke, Father, hallowed be your name speaks to the meaning of all prayer. And this first line connects all the other words of the Lord's Prayer together as a whole. The first line of the Lord's Prayer is an address to the God who Jesus called Father. <clears throat> Father in Aramaic was translated as Abba. Abba would have meant something even more personal and relational than just father. Abba in English would have meant dad or daddy. It is the one word we have of Jesus that comes from his original native language of Aramaic. The scriptures come to us in Greek but Jesus spoke Aramaic. So the majority of his words come to us as a translation. When we address God as Abba, Father, it speaks to the fact that we are in a personal, ongoing relationship with God. Relationships are complex. It is all, uh, it's all, it is not all nice and easy uh, or a bed of roses. Any of us who have ever been in a relationship can attest to that. Relationships can involve heated discussions and conversations. It can at times involve arguments, doubts, fears, anger, and even disbelief. When you are in a relationship with someone, all of your human emotions are exercised in this dialogue. Our relationship with God is the same way as any other relationship, other than the fact that instead of your spouse or your significant other, it is the creator of the whole universe. Our scripture passage from Genesis 18 is a good illustration of what it means to be in an honest relationship with God. This is what it means to be engaged in honest prayer with God. Abraham does not like the fact that God is going to destroy Sodom. He engages in this long conversation with God to try to get God to change God's plan, he says to God that there might be good people there along with innocent bystanders. Are you going to destroy them along with everybody else? Now he doesn't get everything he wants. If you're familiar with the story from Genesis, the city of Sodom 
ends up being destroyed, but his nephew Lot and his family are spared from the destruction. As many of you know, I grew up in a charismatic Pentecostal church. And it was always emphasized to us that we shouldn't have any doubts, we should simply believe. Otherwise, we ran the risk of eternal damnation. The problem with this is that if we are not honest, sharing with God all of our human emotions, doubts, and everything, then we are not really in a true and full relationship with God. The Old Testament, particularly the Psalms and the New Testament, give us plenty of examples of people who went to God in prayer, sharing with God all of their doubts and disappointments, along with all of their joys and blessings. Their lives are models for us of what prayer as a relationship with God is all about. To hallow God's name means to make God's name holy or whole. We got to make God's name holy when we embody the love and grace of Jesus in our everyday lives. God's name is made holy when we give rights to those who are in need of them for public transportation in other countries. We make God's name holy when we give food to those who are in need and we make God's name holy when we invite and tell others about the love and grace that God has shown towards us. We are God's representatives. And everything begins with having a communal relationship with God that leads to hallowing God's name. If we don't begin there, then the kingdom will not come. Daily bread will not be given. Our sins cannot be forgiven as we forgive others. And the time of trial will not be avoided. The Lord's Prayer is a relational prayer that requires something from all of us, just like any other relationship would. Now, after telling them the Lord's Prayer, Jesus goes on to tell the disciples the story about a friend that comes to your house at midnight to ask for three loaves of bread to give to a friend of his that has just arrived at his house. Seems pretty improbable. Perhaps maybe some of you have had that happen. The point of the story is that your friend asking for bread at an inconvenient hour of the night will eventually get bread from you. Regardless of your reluctance, because your friend is persistent. Another interpretation of the word persistent in this text is also shameless. In the ancient biblical culture, hospitality towards others was very important. It was a cultural expectation that you'd be hospitable towards others. Individuals were obligated to be hospitable toward their guests and to give them what they needed. That was the culture. This story connected to the Lord's Prayer seems to be teaching us something about prayer. There have been some unfortunate interpretations of this story. Some have interpreted the householder of the story as being symbolic of God. I don't like that interpretation. That seems to suggest that if we nag enough at God, that God will eventually give us what we want. The point of this parable is that even if a reluctant, hesitant friend will eventually do what is needed to help a friend in need, then God will respond with just as much love and care to us, just like more so than the reluctant friend will. This means that God is always open to being in 
relationship. Does this mean that we will get everything we want when we pray? No. This is one of the unfortunate ways that the, one of the texts in this, saying that this text has been interpreted. The one that says, for everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. One thing I think we should explore when we look at this is that there is a difference between wants and needs. Jesus, in Matthew's account of the Lord's Prayer, says that God knows what we need before we ask for it in prayer. If that is the case, then prayer must be about more than just asking for things. The clue is at the end of the passage where Jesus says, How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? It is the Holy Spirit that God gives to us freely when we ask, knock, and seek. It is not about God giving us anything that we pray for. God knows what we need before we ask. And what we all need is the Holy Spirit. That is the answer to every prayer that is to be prayed. After I had been baptized as a teenager, I was, believe it or not, quite the holy roller in my younger days. I used to, lot, used to watch a lot of televangelists on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. There was one particular televangelist that I really liked who, had, who preached inside of a tent. And after the sermon, he would do an altar call and he would ask, you know, anybody come forward who has health issues that needs to be healed? The lady would come up in a wheelchair, he'd lay his hands on her, and all of a sudden she'd jump out of the wheelchair saying, I'm healed, I'm healed. And at the very end of the show, he advertises this little bottle of water that he says came out of Jacob's well or somewhere in the Holy Land. He says, if you pour this water on whatever part of your body that needs healing, you'll be healed. It didn't cost a whole lot, but he was advertising it for something like 20 bucks. So I went ahead and sent the 20 bucks in to get the, the healing water from the Holy Land. Now, at that point in high school, I had recently found out that I had scoliosis, uh, which was a curvature uh, of the spine during scoliosis screenings that they would have at school. So I really believed this when I was 14, 15. So I laid it down on my stomach, and I told my mom to pour the water on my back, thinking that I would be healed. Of course, the water from the televangelist did not heal me. And I, like many others who have had this theology that comes from the prosperity gospel, which does tremendous damage, this theology that says, if I ask God for something, God will always answer my prayers. I struggled with the fact that God, in this case, did not answer my prayers. But as I learned more of the Bible and seminary and others, especially the Old Testament, I learned that I wasn't alone. There are many people in the Bible that God did not answer their prayers. And some of them are the most well-known people in the Bible. Jesus himself at the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prays for God to let the cup pass from him, the cup does not pass. But Jesus also concludes that prayer by saying, let your will be done, not mine. The Psalms, it's all about people lamenting about God not answering your prayers. Read the Psalm, read Job. Job is constantly in an argument with God. Don't you need water? Yeah. Prayer is about more than simply getting everything you want. Prayer is about having a deep and abiding relationship with God that is honest. Where all of our doubts, anger, and disbelief is shared with God. It's not about what you can get out of prayer. 
It is about what prayer does to you. It is about embodying prayer in your everyday life. Prayer calls us deeper and deeper into the presence of God so that God can use us as disciples who make God's presence known to those in need. Because God always freely gives us the Holy Spirit. Amen.
are joining us online who would like to uh, donate online, you can do so by going to our website where there is a PayPal link. Uh, you can reach me as a pastor at uh, my email and my uh, cell number, or you can mail in checks and money orders to our address here at the church. Also, on the online link, there is a drop-down box that will get you to, uh, if you want to make a donation to take the sanctuary project, where we're looking to raise $9,840 to finish the painting of the sanctuary, and we're currently at um, 2000 Hear these words for this morning's offering, invitation to offering. Compassion stirs us to generous action and hopeful giving. We share the abundance of our resources and spread the gifts we have received for the good of the world and the work of the kingdom. Let us begin this morning's offering. Mm -hmm.
the glory of God, embodying the peace of God, and living the hope of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.